hope you guys can see my screen so we created this interface and we also have to change a lot of approaches because you know uh, the order is being um, now changed for the uh, before we used to go with the CDT query entity and getting the interface but now everything goes through the record so we have to change the order all right so anyways so we created one record right if you guys remember this record we created and then here we also added one action and that that action was about the creating a, another vendor right and then if you see the process model uh, it also created one process model where it captures the interface and then it includes that interface to the process model and take a workflow so what do we need to learn today is that how do we create an interface that we have seen and now how do we see that how do we integrate that interface to the process model right so to do so in this thing right we will learn that how the things are being out of work feature is you know creating the objects for you in RPN and then how we can also create it by yourself this was a process model that was created by Appian, the out of box feature. We just click on this icon and, and you know uh, add action, and it did everything for us. Okay. Now we'll see that how actually we can create a process model and we can configure it in the record itself because the record also allows you to do do you want to create the action automatically by using the out of box feature or you also, you want to configure it manually, right? So we'll see all those options. So right now we are going to uh, create an interface and a process model you know uh, with ourselves okay all right <clears throat> so this was a record we have all these fields now if you go to the action now we see that in the action We have one action called new vendor and this we created by using the out of work feature we can simply create a new actions you know right away within the seconds it will be there we create already done we can click on this update and delete and then you know we can generate and the code will be ready for you right but let's say if i want to create an interface for update right and then how do we see that how the update works so we will use all the manual approach okay so you can understand how this works okay all right so let first create an interface for update we could have you know uh, easily use this um, existing interface to do so uh, not this one uh, this create vendor one because the update will also will look like very much same we could have easily done that but now as we are going to create it manually we'll see with the code uh, how it works how we can create it okay and because we also have to display this license certificate as a downloadable form so we can also see that okay this is the certificate that is already attached we need to change it if we want to all right okay then let's go and start creating the interface so first of all we say new and then interface now we'll name as uh, update vendor okay so this interface oh, it's already there you see create vendor is there i don't see update vendor maybe someone else is using the same name hmm maybe someone else in the in in india instance they are creating this okay no worries i'll say update vendor details so this interface will allow user to update the vendor details. Here is it create. <coughs> right, so when we create an interface, it will be blank totally, isn't it? Now what we need to do is that we need to create a data. So this update interface, right, should have the vendor details already available to it, right? It means this interface required the vendor details from the from somewhere, isn't it? Are you getting my point? Whenever user click on this action update vendor, they should be getting all the details already available here filled up so that they can go and edit, right? So what do we need to create so that they can have uh, you know a values here already
maybe uh, Ravi, uh, you're saying that if we go through the action, this will be automatically uh, uh, developed, right? By the API. Right. right. Then we are creating it manually. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. I see your point. Right. So I'm asking that you know whenever user click, let's say just now we, in the record we have action called create add vendor, right? Let's say when we open the vendor and then we say update vendor. When user click on the update vendor, the interface will pop up with the details filled up, right? So this interface will require the details to be passed, right? So if I want to get those information, what is the first step we have to do? I'm dragging a form layout. Right now, I'm going Maybe to. Can you question you? Mm -hmm. If uh, if people I can understand this what you're saying, but the person who is new to this concept, uh, how do they know that? If we create update and then delete it from then they will understand. Hopefully, right, right. I mean, it, it's just a learning phase, right? We see that how do we app in out of box features? We can create an application, and we also need I to see. learn that how do we do with the code. Right, because mm -hmm. if you have to update the code, if you have to fix some issues, that mm -hmm. cannot be done by using an app and out of box feature, right? You have to get into the code to learn this, right? Yes. That's right. <clears throat> okay, so if I want to pass the value here, already existing values, like let's see, you click on the vendor one, and then you want when you whenever you click on that vendor and say update the vendor details, all the vendor details will be updated, right? So how do we know that? How do we get that value? So to get that value, we would like to create a rule input. Right? I give the name as a vendor record because whenever we click on the record type, right? It's a the value that we have the record type. So I can have HCM vendor. This is a record type that we have. So I create this and say create. Now you see this, a vendor record role input has been created. Now what we can do with this vendor record role input? You can um, <coughs> provide some value to this and then those value will be auto populated here. All right, now update vendor. If you want, you can provide the vendor ID here. So let's say I'm gonna put update vendor. I would use the expression. I put some hyphen here and I'll say, uh, role input ri bank vendor record now if i want to provide any field to the role input i would say record type scm vendor dot fields dot vendor id so now what will happen whatever vendor we will create it will start displaying that number as well that vendor id okay any question till here guys now if you see what's the code behind it so let's go to the expression mode and I'll show you the code. So this is the code is being generated for us till now. So we have one form layout used, giving the label, and then we have this, uh, you know, uh, buttons. So those buttons are here. But there is some issue where the code didn't come here. Let me go click again. Update vendor, and that's what yeah, ampersand role input vendor record record type SCM vendor dot field dot vendor ID. Okay, okay. Now, if you go to the expression, yeah, code is there. So, whatever code we write from the design mode, you can also see on your expression mode. So, this is the code till we have created now if you see this form layout have a contains within the curly braces so this contained area allows you to design the other objects that you wanted to display here right so first of all we would like to have a columns layout right because a columns layout can divide your screen into three columns so how do we start a columns layout so we have a function called a bang column layout there is an s in the function name now hit enter now let's say if you don't remember what are the parameters that we have for a columns layout, you don't have to worry about it. You can simply understand by looking the description window below. If you click inside the columns layout, it will start giving you the 
description of the particular function. Now it says we have a column. So let's use the columns. Right? Now columns could be multiple. So I just use the curly braces. Now the number of columns you want, if you go to the columns attribute here, it says columns to be displayed using a bank column layout. Okay, then we'll use a bank column layout. I'll say a bank column layout. You see there is no s. The difference between the parent function and the child function is that it doesn't have an s in here. So one column layout. Okay. Similarly, I want to divide into three columns. So I'll use three column layouts. Right. You are not able to see the difference here on the UI because nothing is there inside the column layout. But this particular section between these two lines has been divided into three portion. Now let's say how we can see that. Now each column layout have a contained. So I'll say contained. Right now each column layout have a contained. So what is the content I want to display? So let's see what are the contents we have in the create vendor. We have license number. So let's say I'm going to create a bank text field. Right, and the label I would say license number. Right now, you see that this a text field that we have created is just taking this much of area. It means the UI that we have created is being divided. Now, license number it should have the license number, it should display the license number that we the vendor we have clicked. So, for that, we need to use value parameter and value parameter we have to refer like ri bank vendor record the one that user has clicked and we have to define the field scm vendor dot field dot license number right if we do like that then whatever vendor you have clicked that those license number will appear here now user can also modify that right so for if user can modify that, then we also need to use the save into parameter. <coughs> Whatever user will modify, it has to save into the same field. So now let's say if I click test data here, let me see. Uh, <coughs> I think it was license number like this was the thing. Let me check yeah, license number. Now you see that what I did in the test panel, I'm just passing ABC. Okay. So if you go to the interface, you see that license number is not displaying the ABC. <clears throat> if I make the change and make it DEF, it should get updated. Right. You see this one, this is get updated. If I go in the full input parameter, I would see that this is updated to DEF. <clears throat> is that clear? what is the use of test panel, what we are doing it here and how we are getting the values displayed. So just like this way, whenever we click on the actual vendor ID and say that update it, those vendor details will come up in by using this RI and then it will display. And as we are using the same save into, what will happen is that it will update the same value. So it was initially having ABC you see that it is passing AVC, but now what we did is we updated it and it becomes TEF. Let me show you. You see it, it's changing as well, <coughs> right? So likewise, we can also update the values. Now, what are other parameters that we have to set? <coughs> Sorry, one second. <coughs> it should be required. So I'll say required true. Right? Once we do the required true, what happens? A star mark will get added and which will say that this field is a mandatory. You cannot simply go and remove the field. And if you do so, if you do like that and click on submit, it will out of box feature will appear here and say that a value is required. You cannot simply submit the form without having any value for license number field. You don't have to write any code for it. Okay. Any question till here, guys? Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> okay. 
all right then now the second uh, in the first column the second field that we have is gst number so let's do the same what we can do it is going to be in your first column itself right so i can copy this code put it below just change the label to gst number now what else we have to change value and saving to right right so in the value right now it is referring to the license number we have to change field to gst number and then here as well we have to change to the gst number okay right any question any doubt all right <clears throat> what is the third it's a vendor name now let's say i'm copying this field and i'm going to tell that user see you want to change the details that is fine you want to update the details which is fine but you cannot change the vendor name right so first of all what we need to change read only right this is going to be read only okay so for for the value parameter i want to say vendor name okay we don't need a save into because we are not going to allow user to change it required i don't want this parameter because this is not an event field so what we will do we will say that read only true right now if you do like that what will happen let's say i am going to use the parameter here as well let's say vendor name i'll say uh, KP Enterprise. Okay, this the one. There's certain issue here. Okay, comma is missing. Okay. Now, if you do like that, you see that when the name is displaying as KP Enterprise, but it's read only. We cannot modify it. Right? Now, let's say I have a vendor ID. Let me pull some more details here. I have a field called vendor ID. Let's say I'm going to say when ID one, okay, and then um, now you see this this one is displaying here, right? This vendor ID, because all these are the test data that we are passing. Okay, we can pass some test data to see how our interface look like. Right. So if we are not allowing user to dis change the vendor name, right? what do you think what is the ui changes you, you, sh you should you know suggest to the business think as a you know designer per, uh, perspective tell me we are not allowing user to change this name so what else we can do with this field There is no logic, just simply UI perspective I am asking. What do you think, what could be a best practice to display the vendor name? I want to display the vendor name, but could be a better place. At the top? By using con constant run? No, nothing is a use of constant. We, we, we can't say that which vendor name we have, right? I am just asking yes. here. That's correct, right? This vendor name, <clears throat> this field that has a vendor name, what if I use this vendor name to display update vendor and put a M person here, put uh, let's say um, big parenthesis, right? I have some space again, M person and put this vendor name, right? And then again, M person and closing this parenthesis. If I do like that, right what will happen is that you will see that it will now say if parenthesis doesn't look good then we can remove it <coughs> okay uh, put a space though vendor id and person this 
right now what we can do is that instead of having a field we can display the vendor name at the top we we'll say update vendor vendor id and then the name of the vendor <coughs> right so we, what we can do we can simply remove this field from here because we are not allowing them any ways to change it make sense is that clear any question so the label of the form i am giving the details i am saying update the vendor the vendor id and the name of the vendor <coughs> understood clear Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, what else we can do? Uh, we have the second uh, the details to be said. So, vendor name we are not allowing the, to the ch to change it, right? Now, we say that <coughs> you know uh, you can update your email address, right? You can update your mobile number. You you cannot update your registration date, right? So. Uh, when the name category and address <coughs> let's say i'm going to say okay email you can update so i'm going to put one more field here in the first column layout i'm going to say email so we are going to allow them to change their email address so what we need to change we just need to change the mapping of the field here uh, let's say email email now let's say if i go to the test panel and I'll pass some email here. Right, this is the interface. Now we will be able to see that email address. Now you can if user want they can change it. Clear? Any doubt? All right. Now let's say move to the second column layout. In the second column layout again we will put contains and then we will allow them to change let's say mobile number so copy this paste it here change to the contact or whatever we have given i think it's uh, says uh, mobile so i'll say mobile and we have to change this field from field mobile right so that will as we have used a second column layout so this is not displaying it here okay what else we have we have a uh, registration date which should not be editable so what we can do we can display such information here that you know you cannot change the registration date so i am going to display those field here let's say um you know what better to move this email as well to the second column it will look good so I'm just moving that field here. Okay, so mobile and email will be together. We have two field into your first column, two field on your second column. Now, registration date, I want to display the registration date as a read only form. So what I can do in the third column, I'll put a contained and I would say, hmm, right i'll say registration date we have to change this parameter here fail dot registration on we don't need a save into we don't need a required true but what do we need is read only true right now if you do say that let's say i'm going to put some registration date here oh sorry not here oh i removed that field maybe i didn't save it okay fine no worries uh, let's say registration on right and, uh, let's say i'm gonna put today function for today's date so we do you have to click uh, the set as a default then only it saves i don't know yeah 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 default i didn't click on registered on so I, register on let me have the other values let's say vendor id let's say one vendor name 
ABC <coughs> technology um, license number and then we have GST number and then email and then we have let's say a mobile right what else okay fine so I just set as a default and test. Now you see that all these fields are coming up here. Now registration date as a read only. So it's this building, you know, this thing like this. Okay. Now let's say the label, if you want to change, ideally for the editable field, we should be displaying the label as an above, which is by default. We don't have to define it. In case you want to change the label position, we can see the label position. And what are the, you know, uh, associated value for the label position? You can simply see it here. So the label positions are, it could be above, which is a default. We could have adjacent, justified and collapsed. So let's say what happened if I use the just adjacent. If you use just adjacent, then it will be like this. Okay. Right. Now we have another field to be displayed as a read only. That's called address. Now for this one, I would like to have above because the address will be, you know, some having some details, right? It doesn't look good though. This one I have to be justified. And it will come like this. Yeah. Okay. Now address. I have to change the field here for an address. We have not given the test data, so let me put some data here at this. I will say um East Mumbai Maharashtra. That's all. Yeah. We can have some street and all. Maybe see straight right okay test interface oh we didn't click on that again this okay all right now see this uh, this is giving the date uh, registration date address and all right so we have this field okay clear any question till here guys so we designed this interface from the beginning we created each and every field we have one more field to be provided that's the uh, license, license certificate right we should not allow them to change that license certificate so we'll that's why i haven't given the field we'll take, take that field at the top here so any question till here guys we are only allowing few fields to be changed so that they cannot update other details right this should not be updating the registration date should not be updating the address name right but the what they can change they can change their license number gst number mobile number and email right what we can else do the button name that we have submit we can see that as an update so it will become as an update yeah go ahead a uh, uh, license certificate right uh, Ravi? and they can uh -huh. come here and see a uh, you know read only format and if they don't right. like it they can delete i mean update again uh, upload again if they they can do it if you want to have such feature you can have it that's not an issue you can allow them to delete and upload it but let's say I want to display first of all the license certificate. So I'm going to have um, eBank um, document download link. I think it should work. Um,
okay i think it doesn't allow like so okay let me go with the a bank link field okay so i'll download we are going to allow the user to download a document for that we'll allow them to have a link field i'll say label i'm gonna say license certificate okay now um value uh, or the links right the links that we are going to have is a bank document download link now here we need to provide a proper document id otherwise fn will not be able to find that so let me go and open this record type and the document that we have uploaded for those two vendors that we have we can use that particular id so that we can have a proper document id let me open the record right um document id license certificate right this is the one so we can use any one of them so this is one of the actual document id that we have so i'm going to use this license certificate What's the parameter name? Mm. License certificate. Okay, so I'm going to use license certificate, and I'm going to provide this number. Why I'm giving this number? Because this is the actual document ID that we have available into the system, so that we can see it. All right. Now, document download link required three parameters I have a document so I'll just use a document and I'll give the uh, RI bank record type SCM vendor dot field dot license certificate and this is what we have given certain number there now you see this right now nothing is being displayed here why because we have not given the name of it so for the label parameter we can use a document function and then provide the document id which is nothing but this one and i would say the property i would like to have to be displayed is you can see it here folder name or the name of the document so i'll just use this property if you do like that then you see this it is saying that i can demo so what i'm going to do is that i am going to have a label position for this one and i'll say justified so this was a document that we uploaded to the system which i see the document download link if i click on it the same document will get downloaded and you can check that okay so these are the fields that we are not allowing user to change and here the field that we are, we are allowing to change and we see that if we have uploaded any document now based on the document id that appian generates sorry, based on the documents that appian generates it generates the document id and using that document id we can actually download that those documents in the system any question till here Hi, hi Ravi. May I add? Yeah, you yeah. are. Uh, actually, uh, in update also, uh, the user want to uh, upload document means how uh -huh. it is possible. So you make this an editable field. You remove this document and you upload a new document, just like the way we are doing it for the editable field here. So what we need to do is that we need to use a file upload component instead of download document component. Right. let's say let me show you here as well let's say i'm gonna use that um i'm gonna use let's say in, in below the below the gst number let's say i'm gonna have a bank file upload okay we would require the same code i'll say label as a, a license certificate 
right uh, label position is going to be above and uh, target we need to provide the same target that we have here the folder if you remember we created the folder um, so basically we can copy this code right so i'm copying this target because here i want to upload my document right and then max selection i would say one in the value In the value, I will I will use the same RI bank vendor record record type SEM vendor dot field dot resin certificate and the save into I use the same right and then we say require true. Now what it will do? It will display the existing document that you have uploaded you see the name is same right the one that you are going to download here is the same name now what you need to do you need to remove this right and then you have to upload one uh, document is not okay it is breaking because once we remove this field will not work right because we have removed the document so we need to comment the code okay now once you remove it will allow you to upload it again the same component you can have it right to upload the document back so either if you want allow them to change it, the document then you use the file upload component otherwise you can use um, download document link field component to display the document clear uh, okay thank you Ravi. Mm -hmm. okay. all right save the changes So we are almost done with the code now let's say we have two buttons update and cancel right now how do user understand that what button user has clicked so for that I'm going to have one more rule input I'm going to say button action it's going to be type of text create now whenever user will click on update button so what I'm going to say that value as update and save into ri button action. So see here we don't use that a bank save why because we want to save a direct value to a direct field direct role input so we don't need a bank save. Now for the cancel we can remove this and you can say for the cancel you say cancel and save into ri bank but an action doesn't matter if you want to remove this curly braces which is fine that's not an issue so what will happen if i click on cancel my button action will hold the value as cancel if i click on update my button action will have the value of the update so we will know on the process model label what the action user has taken and based on that we will take a decision right any question till here guys this interface designing so we see that how appian creates an interface for you and how you can customize it and we have also seen how do we create an interface from the basic from the scratch using the design mode and the expression mode we see that how do we do that so this is the expression mode we see all the code is here if i go to the design mode we will see all the drag and drop okay okay No questions? Yeah. How about others? Alright. So whoever was in the last class, I gave a task, right? So Venkatesh has shown me. Kalpana, how about you? Did you create that calculator? No, Ravi. I couldn't do that. I have to practice again. Okay. All right. Okay then. Let's stop here. Design this interface. Okay, uh, from the scratch. Go through each and every step. See how we created that, and then show me the interface. 
so tomorrow we'll start the process model and then we'll see that how do we configure this interface to the process model label okay